Hello, and welcome back to An Introduction to Cashly. This is part two, and in this video I'm going to cover all the various settings and things you can do to customize Cashly so that it works the way you like to go caching. So we'll start up the app, and as you can see it goes back to where it was from part one, um, showing the caches in the local area. Now, this is showing ones I've found and ones I've hidden. Typically, though, when I go out caching, I don't want to see the ones I've already found. I want to see ones I've yet to find. So up in the top bar there, you can see it says Location, GC Code and Coordinates. There's a little cog wheel. We click on the cog wheel. It opens up the search options. And there's lots and lots and lots and lots of search options back up to top. Typically what I do is I exclude ones I've already found. I exclude my own caches. I exclude any that's on my ignore list. And I exclude ones that have been archived. Because typically I don't want to see any of them. So we'll put that back and it auto refreshes. And now you can see it's got rid of all my smiley faces and it's only, only showing you caches that are nearby. Now on this list you can see a variety of different colors. The standard green icon is the traditionals. There is one here that is got a little cross on it. That's a currently disabled cache. There's a blue sad face. That's a cache that I've been to and didn't originally find. There's a light blue cache, that's an earth cache. There's a cache at the top here that's in red, that's an event cache. There's a yellow one, that's a multi. Oops, there's lots of caches in that area, so it doesn't, there we go, there's the multi. And we've got one here that's a blue one, which is a puzzle, but it's got a little red triangle. That's one of the nice features of Cachely. When you solve a puzzle and you enter the corrected coordinates, it will show you the icon in the place where the cache actually is. And that's great for GeoArt. You've got lots and lots of caches. You've already solved them. You don't want to know where the original icon is. You want to know where the icon is, where the cache actually physically is, so that you can go straight to it. So that's another nice feature of caching. In addition, if we go back to the search options, you can see you might not want to see inactive ones if you're going out searching. You don't want to see the ones that are currently inactive because there's no point in going for them if the CEO has already disabled it. Um, you can scroll down here. You might think, right, I'm not interested in high terrain ones or I'm not interested in the low terrain ones. I want more of a challenge today, difficulty, min minimum favorites date ranges, if you're after particular dates, if you don't like micros or you don't like large caches, you can select them. Cache types, you can exclude cache types you're not interested in, and so on and so forth. And whenever you change those options, it'll refresh and show you the caches in the area um, that are centered on the point. Now, in this case, I had moved the map slightly, so the center is slightly off, so it therefore gives me different caches. So that's the default options. We've also got some more options here. Um, down the bottom, there is the sh three sheets icon in the sort of bottom center. We click on that, and that gives us the list of all the various offline maps. So we can go into satellite map, and you get the satellite images. That's the Apple stat satellite maps. You can get Google Maps, Google Standard Images, Ordnance Survey Map, Street View in the UK, Open Street Maps, Open Cycle Maps, which are very good for your um, forest paths, Thunder Forest Maps, which are landscape ones, which are good for giving you um, terrain shading. So you can see the hills down the bottom here are all shaded, showing you the hills. Um, and you've also got the offline maps. 
I'll be covering offline in more detail uh, in a future video, but for now you can see that you can go to the offline maps and you can download maps for pretty much anywhere in the world. This is absolutely wonderful for when you're going somewhere you want to make sure you've got a map before you go so that you don't have to use up data. So that's the, the options and then on the more button in the bottom corner we have uh, all the other things you can do and one of the other things you've got there is settings in the settings here you can have metric if you like um, feet yards and miles you can turn off metric cash radius will show you a little circle around each cache that's 161 meters apart 0.1 of a mile you can stop the map rotating some people don't like that they move the map around and it if they pinch it rather than um, they can rotate it and that just prevents that. It can clear the map when it refreshes so that it gives you caches in a new area. You can allow it or not allow it to calibrate the compass. The fit to map option is an option I like to use because that then means whenever you refresh it'll zoom the map to fit all the caches on it. Um, you then have your logging defaults and this is for when you actually go to s uh, log a cache you can say do you want to send it now or not in which case it will save it for later do you want to save it as a field note so that you can upload them all to the geocaching.com and then once you've uploaded them you can then edit them at your leisure you can set the default log type typically I would set it to found it you can set a default log text so if you're going out to an area and you know you're going to be doing dozens and dozens of caches in a day, you might be one of those people who likes to put in just a copy and paste log, in which case you can just put in the text here and whenever you then log a cache it will automatically log it with that text. You've got options for rebuilding your DNFs, so it goes off and checks all your DNFs again. When it downloads pocket queries, does you want it to download images? Can get data from GSAC? And do you want it to auto decode the hint and correct any logs? So there we go, lots and lots of different options on there that you can play about with. One of the main things is just knowing where to find them. Um, so a quick refresher, the more button there gives you the main settings and when you're back in live mode there you've got the button just under the top circle there, the little cog wheel and that takes you to the search options and the three sheets button is your map options. So there we go, that's enough for all the settings and options. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to